This is the ugly truth coming to you live from uh, just outside the United States consulate on uh, University Avenue in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It is Saturday, April the 9th, 2011. Today I'm here to cover the uh, rally in support of Afghanistan to uh, pull our Canadian troops out of there and end the occupation there. This is the ugly truth coming to you live, as you can see behind me, uh, the demonstration has started. People here are tired of all the tax dollars wasted on the occupation in Afghanistan. Uh, we need to bring our troops home. They're not really helping the Afghan people there. Pull the Canadian troops out of Afghanistan and the occupation. Leave the Afghan people alone to build their own destiny. I like to greet you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessing of Almighty Creator be upon you all. The Jewish, Christian, and Muslim all highly respect and believe in the prophets and messengers such as Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. Let's see Jerry Jones' brutality towards their names. In the Quran, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, name is mentioned 69 times. And Jewish, Christian, and Muslim together, 3.5 billion people, they believe in him. But Terry Jones warned them all. What is shame? Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. shame, shame, shame. shame, shame. Brothers and sisters, in humility, all the believers in true and God. Brothers and sisters, in humility, all the believers in one true God never kill any innocent person. They do not abuse any religion, nor do they destroy any sacred book. I call to the people loving, peace-loving people of Canada, and especially the peace-loving people of America. Let us stand together and forget the, the act of Terry Jones and let it not be repeated anywhere in the world and in any sacred book. Thank you very much. We are reaching the 10th year that Afghanistan has been occupied in this illegal war. 10 years and the Afghan people are still suffering. No weapon, tank or bomb will solve their problems. You cannot fight disease with war. You cannot fight poverty with war. You cannot fight for sustainable development with war. You cannot fight for education with war. You cannot fight for women's rights with war. And most of all, you cannot fight for peace with war. Next, I'd like to introduce Layla, who is also a member of Afghans for Peace. She will be reading a poem that she wrote. What is war for but the failure of humanity? What is occupation for but the hate for freedom? What is military spending for but the repression of resistance? What is empire for but the supremacy of some? What is imperialism for but the obstacle of self-determination? What is accepting war, militarism, and empire for but the self-destruction of our souls? What are governments for but the control of the masses? 
What are our leaders for but the deception of guidance? What is ignorance for but the curse of everyone and blessing of no one? What is industrialism for but the creation of the prison and military industrial complex? What is capitalism for but the antithesis of democracy? What is their historical legacy but to divide and conquer the colonized? What is rhetoric of progress for but the weapon of genocide? What is mainstream media for but the monopoly on thinking? What is the so-called international community but extension of colonialism? What is the moral authority of the UN but a shameless hypocrisy disguise? What is the first world but the rich white man's world looting their third world? As MLK stated, this is power without compassion, might without morality, and strength without sight. Let's break down this illusion of knowledge and unite in solidarity against those who seek to divide the world, to divert us into blaming one another, to distract us from the constant exploitation, leaving the true culprits untouched. Thank you. In nearly 40 years, we have seen endless war in Afghanistan and the inhumane massacre of millions of innocent Afghan civilians. On top of that, millions more widowed, orphaned, disabled, refuge, dying from poverty, dying from lack of security. Almost 40 years. We owe it to the next generation to give them a chance of growing up in a society of peace, hope, and tolerance. It won't happen by itself, and it won't happen waiting for others to do it for us. We have to lead the example for others to follow. We as Afghans lose the right to brag about our brave history if we don't have the courage to change our future today. So let us work towards peace and reconciliation. Let us learn to accept one another and unite for solidarity because our community is broken without it and we will never progress without it. Embrace your fellow Afghan, be it Hazara, Tajik, Pashtun, Uzbek, Shia, Sunni, or any other ethnic or religious group. To the Afghans who are here today, we are not just representing the Afghan-led anti-war movement. Today we are representing every Afghan whose heart yearns to see Afghanistan free of war, free of occupation, free of bloodshed, and free of misery. Next I'd like to introduce Alia Khwaja from Kashmir. She'd like to say a few words. Assalamu alaikum. Today I would like to draw your attention to the grave humanitarian crisis in the internationally disputed areas of Indian-occupied Kashmir. The Kashmir question remains as one of the oldest unresolved international problem in the world. In the Indian-occupied Kashmir, human rights violations by Indian occupation forces is a routine matter. Today, not a single household is left that has not lost a woman, a child, or a man to this bloodthirst of occupation forces. Twenty-three resolutions have been passed by the UN on Kashmir dispute. Indian rulers promised before the UN to resolve the dispute and provide the people of Kashmir with their basic right of self-determination, but later backed away from their commitments. India has rejected every suggestion, every appeal. Nothing moved them into action. This is denial of basic human rights and the question, and the question of life and death of 12 million people. The problem should be resolved before it leads to an explosion. The troops have killed over 93,000 Kashmiris, widowed more than 25,000 women, and orphaned more than 100,000 children, and molested or gang raped around, gang raped around 10,000 Kashmiri women during the last past 20 years. And at the end, I just want to say this quote, that how can one speak about war, poverty, and inequality when, uh, when people who suffer from these afflictions don't have a voice to speak? Thank you. Hello everyone, like Surya just mentioned, my name is Leyma Zigakberi. Today I'm going to tell you, like what you guys have been hearing so far, is that NATO is not the solution to Afghanistan. Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan want peace, and NATO is not giving that to us, our, to our country. Millions and millions of people in these past 10 years have died. We've had so many orphans, so many widows, so many people who lost their homes. 
War is not the answer and NATO needs to leave Afghanistan right now. America, being one of the world's superpowers, has so much power. Are you telling me that America cannot defeat the Taliban? How is that even possible? Is that what they're really there for? We can't ignore other facts, like the Afghanistan's strategic location in Central Asia, Afghanistan's natural resources. We can't, throw, we can't throw a blind eye at these issues. And for those people who think that if NATO and, Afghanistan, if NATO and American troops and Canadian troops leave Afghanistan, the Taliban will come and they will ruin our country once again, guess what? First, there was Alexander the Great, who came to our country, and they wanted to invade Afghanistan. And what happened? They were defeated. Alexander the Great wrote in a letter to his mom that, Mother, you gave birth to one Alexander, but in Afghanistan, every son here is an Alexander. And lastly, as a Canadian citizen, I think Canada being a part of NATO is totally against what our values are, totally against what we stand for. Canada stands for democracy, democratic values, equal rights, human rights. We stand for peace. Being a part of NATO, NATO, to be honest, is just a terrorist organization. Tayyabi is a spoken word of poet and a member of Afghans for Peace. Uh, assalamu alaikum. Yeah, this is just a poem I call Mental Slavery. It's about these topics that we're discussing today, so I'll just uh, recite that. I'm hacking, attacking away at shackles and chains that are trapping my brain. Smack, they had it contained, but they shattered a slate. To my mind frame is in a miraculous state. I never want to be known to be mentally enslaved. You can use insanity tactic against me, but I will stay sane. I don't really want fame or to be known like that Alexander as Acid the Great. But I'm a Try to stay humble and pray to the master of fate and police state dictators with lace and fair politics. I'm sure it's just so easy, but you don't think about the populace. Democracy's not solving all the problems in the sovereign nations where all the populace can't afford to be eating food because of the high cost of it. First world nations extend an imperialism to make them more prosperous, while in the third world, GDP stands for guns, death, and phosphorus. <laughs> From the day that we are born to the day that we gon' die, the government tries to spy on our lives, feed us with all their lies till we are fed up with Gazas. They justify a war on terror, blaming it on the Arabs. But me lie, Abu Ghraib leave them embarrassed. Acid is thrown on the faces of the foster kids. And if girls yearn for education, Afghan warlords make them stop in it. Y'all think that Stephen Hopper should be applauded with his war on terror in Afghanistan? When our tax money's funding armor court securities, a company that's funnily funding the Taliban. And what's happening with tackling gangs and snatching contraband when our police just battle protesters that don't really stand a chance like in the G20 antics when the media needed a fake lake, the government had done spots in it, billion dollars they offered it, all of the money was lost in it, when it could be used for a lot of things like school education and ambulances, proper health care. Watching so that robbers is not bothering this omnipresent haunted shit for the darkness that we can't see in this. But Gaza Strip is full of coffins that are full of martyr kids. Oxycontin and crack rock is this your option, kid? Drugs is harming all your lungs while blood is clogging in your veins and you be coughing it out your esophagus. You want to talk to piss it burns. So you teach your logic, kid, and learn. You don't want to lead a life of horror, so don't follow it. Be an optimist. And I'm sorry, kid, but you're just mocking what your mama did by working jobs in this. If you forget about your studies and party like alcoholic kids. And sometimes I think that our future is robbing around some monoliths and obelisk metropolis and democracy's hypocrisy in nations where elections are so often rigged. It's just preposterous. Freemason imagery is often the biggest topic of a lot of this damn music industry as if the artists all just want to be the greatest architect. And Glenn Beck, you racist piece of junk, you can say that... You can say that 10% of our Muslims are terrorists, but in reality, the percentage is less than one. I'm traveling down the valley of corruption and death, illness, corrosion, and flesh, hitting the soul in the chest, so it's broken or blessed, leading to paradise of fire. Only time can tell, but until the day that happens, I'm reminiscing about this road, taken by the Native Americans, leaving a trail of tears, walked upon by Palestinians, who were murdered by Israel, by Sri Lankan Tamils trying to escape the claws of lions, and Egyptians fighting off an evil pharaoh called Mubarak, Afghan villages dying by troops sent out by Obama, voodoo dolls and karma, suicides piranhas, tooth in fact is almost all of the things you see have secret innermost meanings open with a lock and key. You can't seal it, but the key is just to open up your brain and escape the chains of mental enslavement. Yeah, next
we're going to have Pamna. She will also be reading a poem. It's, it is part of morality to not be at home in one's home. And we're saying, then why are you breaking and entering in my house? Why is my life being taken? Where did you take my spouse? Why are we brutally controlled by dictators? Why does my peaceful religion have so many haters? Why is my self-defense mistaken as a violent absurd action? Why is that when I'm being tormented, there is no inspection? Those in power claim the importance of equality. Then why does my nation have the higher rate of mortality? Why is there... Why is their campaign symbol a peace sign when they're definitely not the MIT kind? Why do my people tolerate with their hate when they, perpe when they perpetuate us with their demeaning state? Why is my poverty their prosperity? They blur my sight and lose my vision's clarity. Since my water, water is contaminated and my food is expired, and carrying this water from the well has made me so tired. And I not enjoy the mercenary my shoot me and that the government hired. So my question to you is, Living out a race in a few minutes with no trace. We live in a time of nuclear warfare, where the tears, blood, and emotions are not for care. The worst of men even turn to the good side, but their hearts didn't melt when I cried, because I had lost my mother to a shock since her husband died from a bullet and hit a rock. That the soldier was aiming to kill a terrorist, but my brother watched all that, and, and he also took his last cup of beer. And I yelled for them to spare, though the killers could not care. Hence, my life is filled with despair. I lost my family in less than an hour, while they celebrated this to a champagne shower. All because these people have more power, and we all stood and watched since we're cowards. Congratulations to you as you've succeeded in yet another mission. You made people believe this war and debt was on a fair condition. Now the masses are left ignorant. The masses are left ignorant with input of wrong perspectives, since you made sure your people are uh, the people of your country are not inspected. And me, I will probably end up raped by one of your soldiers or die of hunger and thirst and poverty as I carry a grief filled boulder. So I ask you another question. Was the death of millions enough? Or is there more to your agenda? Because you have made sure generations will suffer from the disease you spread in my land. Aftermath of a war. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next we have Ahmed, he's going to be saying a few words. Yeah. We go into a country saying that we are the liberators, we are the freedom fighters, we are the ones who are gonna get these guys out of their shackles, these primitive people, we're gonna free them. We go there, we go there, and we start hunting them down one by one. Civilians. You know what? We're in a we're in a desert wasteland. Let's have some fun while we're at it. Let's kill this guy. Let's kill that woman. We'll, we'll, we'll make a game out of it. You know what? It's despicable on so many levels. And you've heard here, uh, the, the speakers here are a little more rational than I am. They they give you facts and they want they want to tell you you know the numbers. I am so past that point. I am so past the point of telling people the numbers of people who have been killed, civilians. Forget about the army, the army, the opposition army that nobody has ever seen. I'll give you one number. 92%, 92% of Afghans in Kandahar have said that they don't know why America is in their country. They don't know why a foreign nation is in their nation. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. We now have a campaign waged by racist countries under the guise of humanitarian intervention to uh, exploit and occupy countries like Palestine, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other places. This is the neo-colonialism hiding behind this facade. In the past, it was uh, they used to talk about human, uh, the white man's burden, burden to help barbarians. Now they use the term humanitarian intervention. During the G20, as you know, they arrested uh, more than a thousand people, uh, violated their human rights. This is the kind of society that's developing here, a society bent on criminalism, terrorism outside, and on suppression of freedoms in Canada. So we say no to neocolonialism. No to neocolonialism. Yes to freedom and democracy for the people of the third world. Yes, yes to freedom. No to corporate tax cuts. No to corporate tax cuts. Yes to social justice. Yes to social justice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, from the truck. Yeah.
of the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War. I'd just like to thank everyone for coming out today to this uh, rally, which is but one of many on this day of action against the war in Afghanistan. Not too long ago, in May of 2009, Stephen Harper sat down for an interview on CNN. And in this interview, when, when asked about the war in, Af in Afghanistan, he said, and I quote, Frankly, we are not going to ever defeat the insurgency. What will we tell future generations when they look back at this war and see what a tragedy that it was? What will we say when they ask us, what did you do when NATO bombs were falling on children? What will we say when they ask us how thousands of lives were lost at the hands of our government? No more war, no more occupation, no more imperialism. No more war! 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 Everybody's going to peel up behind this front banner, the big troops out of Afghanistan banner. So we've marched from uh, 
U.S. Consulate on University Avenue over to Young and Dundas Square. And uh, as expected, there are some other rallies going on here. I know uh, people of Syria were getting together to show solidarity. And uh, it looks like a whole bunch of other people here from other organizations all getting together. So uh, quite packed here at Young Dundas Square today. I feel the wind as it blows